what is going on it is friday it is a happy friday because it's actually not raining for once ever in the middle of february here in vancouver just hanging out at the yard and we got something different today uh this place in boom is actually going to uh what will be its home for the next six to twelve months uh, next week it ships out so we uh finally got everything together here we uh this custom built step, um, test stand. This is all fully engineered. I can't explain to you the uh, exact logic and theory behind it and how much weight it has and where the weight is and everything else because I ain't an engineer. But I do know we can fully stretch it out straight off the front. It allows us to do our boom inspections, um, tune our boom controls, which we're going to do today before it's on site, swap out pipe, things like that. Super handy for maintenance. And we're lucky enough at the yard here to have the uh, proper power supply for it. I think, what is it, 480 volt three phase? I believe is what it is. Something like that. Anyhow, it's a uh, 40 meter Putzmeister boom. Like what do they call it, a 36 slash 40? 36 meters this way, 40 meters straight up in the air, the usual. Teach me something. <laughs> what, Teach say, me something. Say that again? What did you say exactly? Don't ask me to hold the camera. Teach me something. Okay. I'll be standing here. Okay, that's what we'll do. We'll teach you how to do it. I was going to get you to film me, but uh, you know, you're much prettier than I am. So, okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to set the boom controls. So, you're going to start, buddy. Put the Teach battery in the remote. I actually have a, a video I did on this a while ago, so we'll keep this pretty brief. And what tells it that it's a teach battery the teach battery has these two pins on it the regular battery does not the teach battery and if i can get in there and make nah, nah, baby barely see it there's a couple contacts that correspond with those pins if you put your teach battery in and uh it's not teaching sometimes those pins could be corroded and it's not making good contact okay so we got that in yeah now jag here is going to do is going to hold down both of these buttons at the same time simultaneously Push yeah. them in nice and hard, hard and mm -hmm. firm while holding those buttons. We're going to release our e-stop. We're going to hit our power button. And what you'll see there, it's rapidly flashing. So that means it's in teach mode just for illustrative purposes. Let the buttons go, buddy. If we were to do this, flash this up without holding the two buttons down on the remote there. Let me do this in the proper sequence would be a good start. See how it flashes much slower? That's not in teach mode. So the rapid flash, hold both buttons again. The rapid flash signifies it is in fact in teach mode. Connect and one more time. And we'll power up the electrical. There we go. Now we are in teach mode. Let go? Yep, let go. So here, I'll get you to film me for a sec. Okay. We've done this one before. I'll take yeah. this, uh, this wrap off this thing and see. So all you want to do, this is super easy. I'm going to start by tuning this in rabbit, just to make sure the boom has full travel on the hand valves. Make sure that we're getting maximum speed on each section for folding and unfolding. And if you want to come up here. Oh, get this. Nobody charged the battery. Oh, epic fail. Anyhow, we'll do a quick demo here before the battery dies. Okay. So we're going to work on the second section here. Died. Kill it. I gotta charge the battery. Okay, let's try this again. We got our uh, teach battery all juiced up here. Green for good. We'll go back over here and try this again. Okay, so what I'm going to do here to get started, I've got this set into Rabbit, and like I said, I just want to make sure that uh, with the uh, stick at maximum travel, the corresponding boom valve is also reaching maximum travel. So I'm going to take this right-hand stick, twist it fully clockwise, which is uh, second boom section, 
fully open is what it should be. So let's do this camera and mouth time here. So as you can see there, when I'm opening that stick all the way, that boom valve is hitting against the stop, which is what we want. And then what I'm gonna do to tune this here, I'm gonna throw it back into turtle. I'm trying to do this with one hand here, a little tough. There we go, something like that. Now with this stick at maximum travel, ideally what I want is I want that valve to open about 50%, about halfway. So I'll do that once again, camera in mouth time. That's actually pretty good. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go through all the boom sections that same way. I'll set them in a rabbit and then I will do, uh, go, go to turtle and make sure that they're all opening about halfway. So I'll do that visual to start with and then I'll just uh, drop down and I'll go by feel off of what the, uh, the boom sections are actually doing speed wise. Um, the other thing I was gonna say, brain fart here. Then once we get that all set, I'll move into the, uh, the engagement points, um, which is basically you move the stick to about where you would like the boom section to actually start traveling at. And then you play around with the plus and minus here on the Teleteach battery to increase or reduce that. Uh, like I said, I have a whole video on doing this uh, with our little 24 meter pump, so I won't get too in depth with this. Um, but I'm just gonna go through all this and then uh, like I said, once I've done everything visually off of the hand valves, I'll move on to uh, doing it visually off the boom sections. Uh, what I'm probably gonna do with this thing, let's climb down here. Because this is for our placing boom, and quite often with the placing booms, uh, we end up with a, uh, a newer boom pump operator, a newer guy or somebody on site that's maybe being trained as a placing boom operator. Um, I'll actually tune the, uh, the snail speed um, much, much lower, snail or turtle, whatever you want to call it, uh, just so that it's a lot more forgiving for a newer guy. So if he does make an error or lean into a stick a little bit too hard, uh, you're not sending the hose guy for a, a wild, wild ride. So yeah, I always, always tune these very conservatively. So I'm just going to go through the, uh, the whole process here and we'll check back in a little bit and see how she looks when I'm all done. So like I said, I'm just going to go through these and kind of, uh, do this by feel. Like I said, I'm going to set this on the slower, more conservative end of the scale. Um, as mentioned before, I have a full video on how to do this. I'll actually put a link in the description below for that one. Um, but yeah, so what I'm doing here right now, so we're going to do the tip section, tip out. That's actually a pretty good speed. For maximum speed, that's about what I want with this. Same with coming back in. That's pretty good. What I'm going to do here, on those windows upstairs, I'm gonna count the partitions, one, two, three, and then I'm gonna count how long it takes me to get that section out and bring it back, see if it's about the same time each each direction. Um, I'll do this on site too, I'll just pick a point of reference, whether it be a tree in the background or whatever the heck it is. So let's go here, tip section out. We'll count how long it takes to get to the end of that third window. One, two, three, four, five, six. About six seconds and we'll come back in one two three four five six seven so we're a little slow on the way in so I'm gonna speed this up a bit pushing on my uh, my plus sign here about three times while I'm holding the stick in which I already did I should have shown you that sorry so we'll take it back out to where it was third window Come back in. One, two, three, four, five. It's actually a little bit quick now. It's gonna take it back out, slow it down by one. Just one push, that'll make a big difference here on this boom. All these booms respond differently. This one is actually quite uh, responsive and sensitive to change. So let's try this again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect, go the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bang on, so both directions are perfect. Um, 
What I will say, I love these HPC remotes. These things are bulletproof. Um, but what I do miss, and one of the old Omnex boxes used to have this, uh, in the receiver, it had LED lights. So you actually had an LED reference for setting these sections. So you weren't doing it all just by visual and by guesswork. Um, the new Aircom remote, the Jackhammer remote that they're coming out with, um, it actually has numerical values on the remote on an LCD screen. So you can actually tune based on those. So you're not relying solely on eye. I wish they had this on these HBCs. Um, aside from that, I absolutely love these remotes and they've been really bulletproof for us. So we'll just uh, keep rocking this one until it needs to be replaced, which will probably be a very long time from now. Maybe into my re retirement, who knows? I'm just gonna show you here. I have not tuned this, this third boom section and this is on snail speed. Look how fast this is, the way it's currently set. Actually, that's pretty good. <laughs> Third section is pretty good. Okay, let's do the second section. That one I know was quick. So here we go, second section. So that's way faster than it should ever be set for turtle speed. There's no need to have that much movement in it or that, uh, that kind of pace. So I'm gonna slow this one down a little bit, hitting my minus button as I hold the stick out. So I tap that button about four times on that minus. Still a little bit quick. I'll give it a couple more taps. And to me, that's eh, one more. That's about perfect. And coming in is actually pretty good. Boom in, boom out. That's about right where I want it to be. Main section down, let's see how this is. That's actually pretty good too, almost perfect. Now I'm gonna stretch this boom out and I'll check everything again. Sometimes it's a little bit tough to tell when the boom is sucked in so close like this, especially when you're doing main section down, main section up. Uh, obviously there's a, uh, a lot more movement at the tip section when you're flat out. So I'll uh, play around with that next. All right, so I think I have this dialed in pretty good here now. I can do uh, Z boom here, sections three, four, and sections two all at the same time. And they uh, come down at pretty equal speeds, which is nice. If you have your tip section set way faster than your third when you're trying to do the Z-boom movements, uh, it kind of throws you off a little bit. But if they're nice and equal, you can just go full stick. They come in about the same rate and your end hose elevation doesn't change too much, which is kind of what you're after, that's what you want. So this is really nice, this is what I'm happy with. The only poopy thing here is I always like to tune my uh, left right slewing with the boom stretched right out. Uh, being that we're on this test stand here, I don't have that option. So I'm gonna have to kind of do that with the boom sucked in a bit, or all the way rather, and uh, just kind of hope for the best. And then I assume when we get this thing out on site, um, that is when I'll throw the teach battery in it again and get it, uh, get it tuned at full stretch. Just tough to find time on these placing boom jobs where you can actually uh, do this sort of thing. Usually you're either pumping concrete or if you're not pumping concrete, they're uh, flying things fast and furious with the crane and you can't really be uh, playing around with the boom, invading their airspace. So, but I think we got this pretty close now. I'm actually quite happy with this, so. So see it full travel on turtle here. I can run all three of these sections, all four actually, and everything comes in nice and even. It's quite, uh, quite in sync here. I might slow down that section B out a little bit. It doesn't need to be that fast. Dial this in a bit. That's kind of kind of perfect. So, okay. So the last thing I'm going to tune here is my engagement point for my slewing. My slewing valve is this one right here. That's my pilot valve. The pilot valve opens up, provides pressure to all the boom valves, and then based on what section I'm moving, that's the, uh, the individual valve that'll move. Oh, great. Here goes the battery again. Get this done quick. So you can see now if I go left or right. I just touch the stick 
and it's really kicking on hard and for slewing that's not what I want I want it to really ease in nice and slow just so that boom isn't isn't jumping around at the end so let's dial this back a bit there we go I was actually going the wrong way but see now when I touch this stick this section just just barely moves a little bit, right? They go the other way and it hammers on. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna slow this down even a little bit more. Just get it the other way here. See this one now? If I move the stick to the right, watch how, how that eases in. Just like that. So anyhow, this is uh, left right is a lot by feel and a lot by personal preference. But I like mine to be just nice and progressive, nice and slow. So all right, I think we got her dialed in. The left right is just where I want it. Always remember to save your settings. You gotta hit the E stop. If you don't, if you let that battery die or you remove the battery without hitting the E stop your uh, all your tuning work that you've done nothing will be saved it'll revert back to how it was before you uh, booted the remote up with with the teach battery in it so all right so just finishing up on the slewing here and unfortunately because we can't stretch the boom out and test the slewing because we're uh, limited by this test stand here just kind of doing it with the boom close in and although this seems painfully slow in its current position with this boom stretched right out I think we'll be about dialed in. So I'm going to call it a day with this, which is perfect timing because the rain is starting to come down. But before we, uh, let's turn the switch off. Before we say goodbye for the day, the last thing I want to point out um, with this new RS850 Putzmeister tower, uh, and this is kind of more my brother's thing. He's sort of our placing boom guru around here. My experience is admittedly limited at this point with it, but, uh, I'm going to try and get him in a video one of these days. I'm working on him. A little camera shy, but I'm chipping away at him. So stay tuned. Anyhow, um, rather than the old, uh, some of the old pin tower stuff, or even like some of the uh, competing brands of placing boom, um, they use a whole bunch of bolts, nuts and bolts. They have to be torqued to something like 1,200 foot-pounds or something crazy like that. Uh, it can be really time-consuming piecing the mass sections together and whatnot. On this Putzmeister setup, all they use are these, these pins that knock in. And then they retain right at the back there with those uh, those retaining clips and two bolts. Makes it so much quicker and easier to piece this stuff together. That's one of the best features of this stuff. The other good, amazing feature being, let me walk around. Oh, you can't really see it here. I'd have to show you on a, uh, a long section of column um, the way that it, it is a V notch in the column and your pipe runs down through that. Kind of tough to tell with this. I'll, uh, I'll show you when we get this thing set up on the job site. It's great, I promise. You'll see what I mean. So, anyhow, that's it for the day. Just another, uh, another yard day here, another February yard day. So, my next video will probably be us setting this thing up on the job site. So, I'm quite excited about that one. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe, over and out.